Hey everybody, it's me, your bestie who's a vestie, fully clothed and killing it, Vivian Frost with a wig so nice, had to wear it thrice. So, anyway, uh, yes, if you've been watching the last episode on Top 10 Vestite and also the last episode of my RuPaul's Drag Race Season 13 recap, or Ru-cap to stay on brand, you would have seen this wig for the third time. Got it for birthday present. I fucking love it. But anyway, this week's episode of Top 10 Vestite, my personal favorite top 10 in order, which was very hard. Rocky Horror Picture Show songs from the film. I, to, I was originally going to do Tim Curry movies. I was like, wait, no. Let's savor the curry. And we'll start. You know, kind of where it all began. <laughs> uh, with the Rocky Horror Picture Show. So, I fucking love this film. Duh. Um, but seriously, because I like it because I think it's it's a genuinely good fucking movie that if you get it, you get it. And in terms of a musical, there's, you know, when you look at all the songs, there's really, there's not a bad one. It's, you know, it's, you know, you're picking your favorite, you know, great song. You know, it's a greatest hits and it's just one album. You know, oh, you can't shock treatment. Um, you know, it was like the greatest hits album came out first and then the rest came out. Anyway, getting off topic, well, on topic, but off brand, I don't, I don't know if I can say it. Anyway, number 10, ropes tip my world, keep me safe from trouble and pain. Anyway, fucking love this song. I wish I could be, what was it, not statue, I forget the fucking, you know, the switch, the Fuck, I don't fucking remember, and I'm fucking super stoned, so I can't even fucking think straight. Anyway, you know, yeah, just give me any fucking verse. I can sing them all. Uh, but, you know, in the original, like, soundtrack version, this is all part of the same song. Uh, like, there's like three different songs in here, and it was all kind of under Rose Tip My World. For the most part, so it is broken up if you're wondering. And you're like, what the fuck is she doing? Uh, number nine, Creature of the Night. Creature of the Night. Creature of the Night. Wow. Super fucking stone right now. Which is great. Because I'm feeling it, baby. But anyway, my number nine favorite song on the soundtrack, Creature of the Night. I fucking love this one. It just picks up the mood. Serenin's great. Very great. Um, uh, as is every part of that song. Uh, number eight, the second part. Third part. Third part of Roast in My World. Uh, track 8.c or 9.c, whatever it was on the original soundtrack, something like that. Uh, Wild and Untamed Thing. Great. You know, it's literally like some sort of Broadway number, and it's just super fucking fun, and it's, you know, you're all so happy, and then it all comes crashing down. Like having the Sword of Damocles over your head. That ain't no crime. See, I could totally be the, uh, you know, part of the Transylvanians. Just, just let me get back there, let me get my fucking drugs, my fucking drink, my fucking drag, and maybe one of the Transylvanians. I can do that. Pretty confident, but Sword of Damocles not even on like the original soundtrack, if I remember correctly, it was more like the special edition edition soundtrack when it came to CD in the 90s, I believe. I'm not a Rocky Horror historian yet, but something like that is true, I promise. So I can start a channel called Tim Vestite Fact Checker so that there's no fake news on this goddamn channel. I'm keeping it real. Anyway, and we're so keeping it real over at the Frankenstein place. Fucking love this song. It's just so sweet. And then Riff Raff solo in the window. So beautiful. And it really sets the tone for what's to come. Uh, number five. What? Not Vivian's favorite one? Duh, because I'm an unconventional conventionalist. Sweet transvestite. My number five. No. The thing, I never really thought about this until the last couple times I watched it. 
uh, how that if you've never even, you had no clue about this movie. You know, because once it became a cult thing, everybody just knew about this before they even saw the fucking thing. We can, I can't imagine, I don't, or I don't remember the first time I saw it. Well, I already knew this was going to happen, so, but the first people who saw it, to where, you know, Tim Curry's just, he looks like a vampire. You know, and then when he gets up there and does this iconic fucking move, that is a huge, like, reveal for the movie. <laughs> and I think most people going into it when it became a cult thing, uh, the good kind of cult thing, um, like was kind of lost because it was already known. It's like, kids these days already know Darth Vader's Luke Skywalker's father. Oh shit. I'm so sorry. Go have the talk with your father figure, hun. Um, anyway, Sweet Transit Society is my number five. Number four. No, that's not my number one either. Why? Because it's just a jump to the left. And then a step to the right. I put my hands on my fake foam hips. And tuck my knees in tight, but it's the pelvic thrust it really drove me in fucking sane. It's the goddamn time warp again, blah blah. It's just you feel like you have to at least sing a bar when you talk about the fucking song, but it's so fucking iconic. Even people who have never seen the Rocky Horror Picture Show, if you've been to a Halloween party in the past 40, 50 years. You fucking love this song. And I would say one of the most iconic guitar riffs of all time. Uh, yeah, sure. I'll stand by that. Fuck it. I'm drunk and high. Number three. Hot Patootie, Bless My Soul. Now this was, the, upon my first listen of this, like watching it for the first time, this was the first song that just hit me. Because like when I'm watching a musical, there's always like that song that catches me. Like immediately I'm into it. So I'm paying more attention, like, oh, that song's, this song's great. What's next? What's next? Et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but in this movie, like, the first time I watched it on VH1 with commercials, and this song came on, because this was there, when I first saw it, like, around, you know, 92, maybe, I guess, 91. So whatever time around there, when grunge was popular, because it was just like, this was the song that, like, woke me up. Like, okay, what the fuck is this? And it's still the third best song to me on the fucking soundtrack. Number two, part B, of Rose Tint My World. Uh, I think if I explained it correctly earlier, which I hope I did. Because I don't remember 10 seconds ago. Anyway, don't dream it. Be it. Now, unfortunately, this is like, when Tim Curry does leave this mortal coil to ascend to godhood to become, you know, the all high mighty Curry. Uh, Timothy Curry, you know, like Jesus Christ, that's a loose connection, I kind of make the, the syllables fit the uh, parable. Anyway, this is going to be one of the scenes they're going to show, and especially the number one one, so there's a spoiler if you know the fucking show. But Don't Dream It Be It, this little interlude, so fucking beautiful, just gorgeous. And look, I don't think it gets credit for being as well directed a movie as it fucking is, but the Rocky Horror Picture Show has some amazing fucking direction. Fight me bitch um, and number one you know when, when I see this pop up on my news feed this picture and I didn't post it for some reason I will fucking die because this is I'm going home is like the most iconic arguably the most iconic Tim Curry moment you know when you look at his whole career and everything it's just so it just makes it more poignant and beautiful every time you see it you know I can't fathom watching this scene or watching this film, which, you know, most likely, like, every fucking jabroni, you know, when he does die, everybody's gonna watch his films, like, you know, it's, it's gonna be definitely gonna be this. This is the one, you know, I might want to do, like, a triple feature. Legend Clue, Rocky Horror, maybe Home Alone 2, depending on how close to Christmas it is. Um, but, anyway, this song is so fucking, you know, this was the next song, like, the first time I heard this, that watched it, it was Hot Patootie, and then this one just sealed the deal, like, this is so fucking amazing. And knowing that this song was at the end made me like, go through some of the songs that didn't hit me at first. But then because I wanted to keep getting to I'm Going Home, the best goddamn song on the soundtrack, um, it just, the love for all of it just you know, exponentially increased. You know, all because the song being at the end. And it's so fucking good. It makes me cry just thinking of Tim Curry. Because we love you, Tim. Uh, but yeah, that's my top 10 best I'd favorite Rocky Horror songs. So I'm doing this live on Twitch. 
haven't even checked the chat yet, but it looks fucking dead. Anyway, like, subscribe. You can subscribe right here. Watch this video because whatever other weird shit you've been searching for on YouTube, this is what it thinks you're going to like the most. So if it's your first time here, click that one, become a fan, constructive criticism. And, uh, you know, I do have other social media links down below. Uh, it seems from what people have, t we've chatted about on other forms of social media where people can't see their history as easily on their home TV for their, you know, immediate relationships or whatever you want to fucking say. Uh, you know, that's fine. You can reach out to me on there. I always like to talk. So, as you can fucking see. Anyway, I will need you next time, so stay fucking frosty, bitches.